What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome to the Keep It Techie channel where we dive deep into Linux tech and everything in between. And today I'm excited to walk you through my home network setup, which I've carefully crafted over time. It's a mix of power, efficiency, and a bit of nerdy goodness that I think you all will appreciate. And if you've ever wondered how to set up a network that can handle everything from IoT devices to VMs running web servers, you're in the right place. But before we get started, I got to give a quick shout out to two channels that I have been following for a very long time and they were instrumental in helping me put this setup together. And that's Lawrence Systems as well as Techno Tim. Both of these guys dropped some serious knowledge on the channel. So if you're looking to learn more about networking or just tech in general, be sure to check them out. Now grab yourself a coffee and let's get into it. All right, first things first, let's talk about the gear. You know how they say you're only as good as the tools you have. Well, in the world of networking, that couldn't be more accurate. And my setup starts with a Protectly Vault running PFSense as the brains of the operation. And this little powerhouse handles all my routing and firewall duties, keeping my network locked down tighter than Fort Knox. Now, next up, I got a Netgear 8 port gigabit Ethernet plus switch, and this baby connects everything and make sure my traffic flows smoothly without any bottlenecks. It's like the highway system for my data. No one likes traffic jams, right? And believe me, if you've ever dealt with network congestion, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Then I also have a Netgear Nighthawk uh, Wi-Fi 6 router. Now this is what I was using in the past to run my network actually. It was just all connected to one device and everything was, you know, there. So, but over time, I started adding more equipment to it, but this router handles both my IoT and laptop connections. And one thing I like about it is fast and it's reliable. And honestly, it saved me from a few Wi Fi tantrums. You know, the kind where you're trying to stream something and a buffering icon just laughs in your face? Yeah, none of that nonsense has been happening since I put that on my network, at least for Wi Fi. Now, the next thing on my network, I'm rocking one of those Synology four bay NASs. And I also have four eight terabyte Western digital drives and they're set up in array five. And this is where I keep everything from backups to media files. Redundancy is key guys. And if you're not backing up, you're asking for trouble. I mean, you don't want to be that person who loses everything because of a single drive failure. And so Ray five gives me that balance of redundancy and space efficiency. So I'm covered on both ends. And just to let you guys know, those four eight terabytes in Array 5, it gives me 24 terabytes. So if you guys are looking to do that, you will lose some space. Because if you add up those terabytes, it's 32. The most you can get out of it with Array 5 is 24 terabytes. Now, finally, I showed you guys this system a while back, and it's something that I purchased from Dell. I didn't want to build something. I wanted to get something that had everything I needed, and I could just install the operating system and get going with it and that's my dell power edge t140 server all right cool so this is the server it's kind of small and the only reason i got it on the side is so i can open it up show you guys what's in it right fast but it's pretty much it it came with a one terabyte core drive and what i did was i purchased another one what i'm gonna do is run Pro proxmox on it and i'm gonna i bought another one and i installed that one and so that way I could run a, a RAID, you know, with those two drives, one terabyte drives for the operating system. And then that's my RAM I put in there. It came with one. I think this is the one that it came with. And then I put these three in here and they're all 16 gigs. So for a total of uh, 64 gigabytes. And then, like I said, that's the Xeon processor. And just to give you the specs right fast, I want to make sure you guys uh, know exactly what it is but it is the xeon e2226 g uh it's 3.4 gigahertz uh 12 megabytes uh cache and that's pretty much it on it like i said it's just like a regular desktop but it has a server grade processor in it which is super cool i kind of customized this thing made it look how i wanted to look or put what i wanted in it and so they had to you know custom build it and all that good stuff so it took a while for it to come in, but that's basically what it looks like from the front. Just show you guys, it's super short. You know what I'm saying? Most of the servers I done had in the past, they've been, you know, about this height or taller. Uh, but they, you know, shrunk it down using that small motherboard. So, and uh, packing everything into that small space. So, 
super cool. Uh, I'm excited. Can't wait to have this thing uh, set up and, and running. So, and it has a Intel Xeon E2226G processor in it. And it also has 64 gigabits of DDR4 RAM and a bunch of VMs running everything from Plex to Libre Chat. And this is where the magic happens. It's like having a mini data center in my home. And let's be real, who wouldn't want that? I mean, what's cooler than having your own server running a Minecraft world while you're streaming movies and managing your smart home? So that pretty much breaks down everything in my network setup that I wanna share with you guys right now. But let's get into the network configuration. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ co now i've segmented the network and like i said shout out to lawrence systems he kind of helped me by watching a lot of his content his videos i've been watching him for a very long time but if you've been following me for a while you know i'm all about security and efficiency that's where vlans come in and i got two vlans set up this is actually my first time setting up vlans most of the time i just throw a router you know and connected it to the modem that was coming into my house i never looked into networking and i don't know if you guys remember this but i told you i used to want to be a network administrator. I went through even the training for it. I went through Katia Network Plus and was looking at taking the CCNA at some point. But once I got in and started messing around with like Cisco switches and all that, I ended up not being as interested in that as I thought I would when I was going to school and kind of drifted to another area. But anyway, like I said, I got two VLANs set up, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, plus the main LAN. Now VLAN 20 is the one that's dedicated to my IoT devices. And so like all my smart gadgets, like I got thermostats, I got cameras, I got Google Chromecast throughout the house. I got some of those Google displays. So when someone rings the doorbell, I can see, you know, they picture up there on the, on the screen or whatever before I go to the door. And also I could just pull up any of the cameras around my house, you know, from one of these devices. But they're all connected on a 2.5 gigahertz band of the Nighthawk. And why? That's because these devices don't need fast speed, in my opinion. And by keeping them on their own VLAN, I'm minimizing the security risk as well. I mean, it's like having a separate playground for all your smart devices. You don't have to worry about them pinging other devices on your network because they're all separated by that VLAN. And we can let them play over there, but don't let them mess with the rest of my network, essentially. Now, VLAN 30, on the other hand, is for my laptops, my work laptops, and that's where the 5G you know, band comes into play. And I can actually set up another, you know, band. I think it has, this This router has three, three bands, I believe. But this one gives me the speed and bandwidth I need without interference from all the IoT devices. Plus separating these networks keeps my more sensitive data safe from any potential vulnerabilities of the IoT side. And you don't want your laptop traffic mixing with your smart devices, trust me. And of course, on the main LAN, this is where the heavy lifting happens. And my Dell Power Edge T140 lives there. And it's running, like I said, various VMs for Plex, Libre Chat. I even have a pie hole for DNS. I have like Minecraft servers for the kids, web servers for some development of applications that I go through and work on. And all these services are neatly separated by firewall rules, making sure everything stays organized and secure. I also have my main system on this network. And this is where I do all my recording. And I also have my Synology drive hooked to this as well. So I can access all my files. I could work remotely. That's why I want to use the LAN for that. Everything is plugged in directly to the switch. Like for instance, my Synology drive is plugged into the switch as well as my main desktop is plugged into the switch. I can work directly off the Synology drive while editing videos and all that good stuff. And so at the end of the day, separation is key in my opinion to keep things running smooth. Now let's dig a little deeper into the security, like specifically the firewall rules. This is where PFSense really shines. I've set up firewall rules to keep my VLAN separated, ensuring that IoT devices can only talk to the internet and nothing else. And my main LAN has stricter rules since it's where all my important services run. Only specific devices have access to it. And I've locked it down to prevent any funny business. And the beauty of PFSense is that you can get as granular 
as you want with the rules. Now, I ain't gonna lie, these rules caused a headache like crazy, setting a lot of this stuff up, you know what I'm saying? But once you start getting a hang of how it works and how it all ties in together, then you'll figure it out. And to be honest, it's not a lot of good examples out there. That's one thing I found while doing a lot of research and I wanted to warn you if you set up PFSense, it's not much references out there. I, I promise to you guys that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start doing some rule breakdowns as I'm figuring this stuff out so you guys can understand how to make those changes on your same devices if you want to based on the rules that we put out there. And that's the thing with PFSense, everybody has a different network. So a lot of people rules are set up differently. Like some of the examples I looked at on Lauren Systems channel, they really didn't work for what I was trying to do. Some of them did, but not all of them did. And so some of those rules didn't work too well for what I was trying to actually do. But other people videos like bits and pieces of theirs actually worked out or allowed certain traffic to run the way I wanted to run and certain services I wanted shared over to let's say the IOT network available by setting up and following those rules that were put out there by some people. I'm gonna try to standardize some of it as much as I can by putting out information in a detailed way so you guys can understand it and set this stuff up for yourself. And I understand, I know like Lawrence Systems, he's a business, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to get more clients, which is super dope. I respect that, man. Shout out to your business. You know, and like I said, I've always respected what you do on your channel. You know, Lawrence, you put out awesome content and review a lot of awesome products. And so I really respect what you're doing over there. I do understand you have to keep certain things to yourself, especially like more complex ways of setting things up because you're the subject matter expert. You got to, you know, you want to sell those products, which is super cool. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm going to try to help out people as well by adding a little bit more of what I figure out as I'm learning things. And hopefully it helps more people. That's all I'm saying. Now, of course, I got a VPN set up so I can securely manage everything remotely if I need to. I'm using OpenVPN, you know, and PFSense. That's one cool thing about it. It's got packages you can install on the system, you know, and just get it set up right there. It makes it super simple as well as dynamic DNS. And I run it all through Cloudflare. And the reason I have, you know, like the VPN access is sometimes you need to tweak things when you're not at home. Like, for instance, I travel a lot. Sometimes I have to go down to San Diego. And let's say something happens on the network with the kids, you know, for school or the wife or whatever can't get on something that she needs. I can remotely log in and try to troubleshoot it from a distance. So that's one of the benefits of having those VPNs set up at home. And then also the security is awesome for VPNs. You guys have seen me. I did videos on showing you guys how to set up open VPN on a server, pretty much walking through and doing all the configurations. But PFSense makes it super simple. Definitely check that package out. Trust me, I want to do another video a comprehensive video showing you guys PF Sense, showing you guys rules, showing you guys how to set up certain things. I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of everything I have set up. But at the end of the day, it's all about keeping things locked down while still giving yourself the flexibility to manage your network wherever you are. So there you have it, folks. My home network setup in all this nerdy glory. I hope this gives you some ideas on how to level up your own network. So whether you're just starting out or looking to optimize what you already got, Remember, it's all about finding the right balance between performance, security, and flexibility. And before I go, I want to give another huge shout out to Lawrence System, as well as a techno Tim. I haven't spoke to him, spoke about him that much on here, but I've been following him for a while as well. One thing I do on my server, my Power Edge, is straight prox mics, and I learned all that prox mic stuff from techno Tim. So huge shout out to him as well. But these guys have been a huge help in getting my network where it is today. So definitely check them out if you're into this kind of stuff. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and drop a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions. Was there something I could have done better? You guys let me know down in the comments. Like I said, I'm not a network guy, but anyway, thanks for watching, and as always, keep it techie. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you got to figure out what you like or what you're interested in, because yeah a lot of people get into the you know tech field because you can make a good amount of money the money is the motivator but you also in my opinion in order for you to be happy you gotta like what you're doing you know what i'm saying and so like for me a lot of times it doesn't feel like work bro most times it really doesn't feel like work it's it's yeah i'm doing something fun i'm doing something i love to do you know what i'm saying so that's what makes it you know great for me